Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? This is Jeff from BKJ Mac TV, and this is the BKJ Mac Podcast Experience coming to you live on this crazy night, kind of rainy day from Brooklyn, New York. All right, this is season three, episode ten. Let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna be doing a review on the notorious. 2009 movie which talks about the late great rapper from Brooklyn Best Die Brooklyn Notorious Christopher Wallace Notorious B.I.G. Um, the movie um, I watched it recently the other day and looking at it I felt uneven I felt uneven about it I felt I felt more on the uh on the negative than on the positive side of the movie I felt like there were elements that could have been flushed out more and looking at it with as looking at it the notorious B.I.G I felt like um Jamal who um played who played um notorious I felt like his presence on screen didn't really I didn't feel biggie if you look at the the tapes if you look at the videos if you look at the um the shows on mtv back in the 90s you would see biggie like you could feel his voice his voice was imposing he has that he had that voice when you hear um jamal wood um jamal woodlord um trying to sound like biggie is his voice was just really not really it didn't it just it didn't give me biggie it, it didn't it didn't give me biggie and there were moments they had some flashes in the movie but it was it just didn't it just didn't give me biggie and two um the one who the actor who played um sean p diddy combs Derek luke i definitely did not feel diddy at all Diddy, if you look at the videos, if you look at the interviews in the early 90s, mid 90s, Puffy was just this really soft spoken um, entrepreneur. And I, he, the way he did his video, the way he did his interviews was like, hey, hey, what's up, what's up? You know, he was very soft spoken. Um, there was an anger side he had. And I felt like, but he had a very calm demeanor. And in the movie, I felt um, Derek Derek Luke was chewing up all the scene, trying to say, "I'm a beast, I'm a jungle." I just, I, I just didn't like that. I felt like that was reaching too much, you know. And if I had to direct it, I would, I would bring it down some. But I, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like his performance as um, as Sean P. Diddy Combs. And I was 50-50 on Jamal's portrayal of the notorious B.I.G. Angela Bass's performance, I enjoyed a lot as um, Biggie's moms. I really enjoyed her performance in a sense. I, I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, little Kim, um, Notori. She did a great job in playing Little Kim. There was a there was that fiery instinct of Little Kim, and you knew that was Little Kim on the screen. Um, the uh, Mister the man that well, we'll get more into that as we move on to this review. Um, Roger Ebert, he is someone. He he was someone that I that I well I look up to him still regardless but he passed away um many years ago and um i look up to him because of his um of his ability to look at film to capture the fine the finer details of film critical film review so um if you want to go more in depth of this notorious movie i would suggest you go into his website rogerebert.com where he left a legacy of writers that would continue his work even after he's passed away. So one of his work, one of the works that he did was dated January 14, 2009, and he wrote and he gave it three and a half stars. 
Let's see what he says about it. He was known as a notorious B.I.G., a man mountain of rap. But behind the image was Christopher Wallace, an overgrown kid who was trying to grow up and do the right thing. The image we know about. The film Notorious is more interested in the kid. He was born in Brooklyn, loved his mother, a teacher who was studying for a master's degree. Got into street corner drug dealing because he liked the money, performed rap on the street, and at 20 was signed by record producer Sean Combs. Four years later, he was dead. Sad. Documentaries about B.I.G. have focused on the final years of his life. Notorious tells us of a bright kid who was abandoned by his father, raised by a mother from Jamaica, who laid down the rules and told the kids on the playground who would be famous someday. You're too fat, too black, and too ugly, a girl tells him. He just looks at her. He is sweet-tempered even after being seduced into the street corner crack business. But he sounds tough in his rap songs. Tough, introspective, autobiographical, and a gifted writer. His demi tape is heard by Sean Combs, demo, excuse me, who is seen in the film as a good influence, in part perhaps because he's the movie's executive producer. Hmm, <laughs> why am I not surprised? Combs draws a line between the street as a market and a place where he wants his artists to be seen. B.I.G. leaves the drug business and almost overnight becomes a huge and almost overnight because becomes a huge star. An East Coast rapper to match the West Coast artists like Tupac Shakur. Um, Tupac was shot dead not long before B.I.G. was murdered and the word was they died because of a feud between the East and West Coast dynasties. And one time friends B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur, another Anthony Mickey, another version, in Nick Bloomfield's 2002 documentary Big and Tupac is that both shootings were ordered by rap tycoon Shug Knight and carried out by off-duty LAPD officers in his hire. Bloomfield produces an eyewitness and a bag man who says on camera that he delivered the money. The film perhaps wisely sidesteps this possibility. Anyhow, um, well, I'll tell you this. Um, the actor, Anthony Mickey, who is well known as the um, a fixture in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and who played the actor who got dissed by Eminem in 8 Mile back in 2002 when he was coming up on the big screen. Basically, I did not like his portrayal of Tupac. I felt like it was just a bit too much. It was too... It just wasn't Tupac. You know, you could just have the feeling like it just wasn't Tupac. And since um, Sean P. Diddy Combs directed um was the executive producer he was able to control the narrative of how this movie was going to be told so thus the the exclusion of the Shook Knight ordering off-duty officers to kill both but it's been disproven that two um LAPD members did not kill Tupac it was a gang um killing um because um things should have never happened events should have never transpired um cooler heads should have prevailed that was a senseless killing that should have never happened and the biggie situation was a was a was a, a retaliation act of that and that should have never happened either cooler heads definitely should have prevailed but remember these cats were in their were in their 20s were in their mid 20s and the testosterone was running high. And it's just like it's one of the reasons why people could look back in their 40s and their 50s and they could look back at this time and say, man, there was some really wild stuff that really went down. And looking at the movie, you you felt like it didn't capture that grittiness. You didn't really feel the East Coast, West Coast beef. You didn't really feel the drama, the intensity and how it really destroyed the the fabric of the music industry um, particularly pertaining to rap this movie misses the mark on so many levels and i think 
it's due to the heavy hand and influence of Sean P. Diddy Combs because he desperately wants to control the narrative. If you look at Straight Outta Compton, and that came out in 2015, that movie got a 95. I enjoyed that movie a lot. Why? Because it captured the grittiness. It captured the toughness of of South, excuse me, of Compton. Now, granted, there was some things it glossed over, but it was enough. The moments in the movie was enough to say, hey, this movie is gritty. This movie is tough. So with Notorious that came out in 2009, it really didn't, it didn't, it, it, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't live up to its true creed. You know, and that's something that I've I've been pissed about. There's a TV series that was done on the USA, and it's on Netflix. Um, I think it's a cold case um, show that talks about Big and Tupac. That one does a way better job, way better job of the portrayal of Biggie and Tupac than this notorious 2009 movie that came out. So. Honestly, it's a movie um, um, that's that's obviously it's 2009. I don't know if they'll ever come up with another Moon Notorious movie ever again. Who knows? Diddy owns the Masters. Diddy owns this. Diddy owns that. So it's a. It's at the end of the day, it's on Diddy. So see what happens. But he told the story from a kid about from Brooklyn who wanted to make it big in the music industry and we got notorious 2009 thank you for listening to this episode of the bkj map podcast experience peace love always one